All right, what's up, guys? All right. So, all right. Coach Little Joe. So, 11 days out. All right. Are we doing intro now? All right, guys. Of course, if you haven't hit that red button and subscribed yet, make sure you do that and subscribe now. What's going on, you guys? Coach Little Joe here, and we are officially two days out of Canadian Nationals, which is on Saturday this upcoming weekend. Now, by the time I post this video, it'll be tomorrow, so it'll be one day out, but I just wanted to jump on here, uh, even though I've been really busy with my, my clients uh, who are preparing for the show this weekend. I have six clients competing. Um, all of them are bodybuilders, actually, so they're all gonna be in the, the open bodybuilding division and different weight classes from light heavy to super heavy. So I'm really excited for these guys because, you know, for myself this year, uh, I only competed once, so this is kind of a way for me to, you know, sort of live vicariously through these guys and see them, you know, see out their preps and like all the work they've put in and, and, and so on and so forth and just dial it in and, you know, showcase a great look. Um, for some of them, it's their first nationals. For others, they've been to nationals before, but it's still, you know, a great opportunity to showcase your best and do it against the best in Canada, which is, you know, the biggest stage that you can ask for as an amateur here. Um, that being said, you know, like it, it kind of had me reminiscing, you know, the last few days about like when I, you know, was uh, still an amateur pursuing that pro card and you know how it took me seven years and eight pro qualifiers to finally get it. And when I did finally get it, you know, th just over three years ago, it was just like, you know, it was just like seeing all those years of work, you know, coming together and finally, you know, seeing that end result that you've been working towards so hard. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're right back to it, trying to pursue the next goal to like be a pro and you know, win pro shows and, you know, compete at the Olympia XYZ, you know, uh, I haven't accomplished that quite yet, you know, winning a pro show and getting to the Olympia, but, you know, that's still on my radar and that's still something I'm going to be trying to do in the near future. So this weekend, you know, it's going to be a huge opportunity for people to, uh, you know, make a name for themselves and, uh, you know, put, to get their face on the map if they've never been out there before. And, you know, I'm excited for all my clients because I think they all have a great opportunity to do well. Um, they've all worked their asses off and, uh, you know, I've just, uh, you know, seen just that process and like similar things I've gone through myself and like, you know, almost 20 shows that I've done myself. So it's, uh, you know, it's really cool to be able to help other people in that process and, you know, coach them along the way. And like the fact that I'll be able to be there and be backstage and help these guys, uh, you know, I just, I'm just really excited for it. And I, I can't wait to see it unfold. Now, uh, that being said, I did want to touch on a few things uh, about leading into a show. Um, and when it comes to traveling for a show, as well as um, some backstage tips, okay? So when it comes to traveling for a show, I know this video will be out a little bit late for people doing nationals, but it's still something you could take notes on. Um, so when it comes to, if you're flying to a show, let's say, if you're flying to a show, the biggest thing I recommend is two things. For one, you should always try and leave three days before the show because you want to give your body time to adjust um, because traveling can cause stress on your body, whether it's water retention, you know, digestive issues, bloating, etc like throws off your sleep because you have to catch an early flight things like that so you want to leave early enough so your body can adjust to where you're going to be you know you have time to find a grocery store you have time to find a gym if you need to train um things like that so you're all set up for for what you need to do leading into the show and it just makes the process a lot smoother if you leave early enough to prevent any you know mishaps okay um if you're driving, I would always recommend leaving two days before. Same sort of concept. Like even if the drive is only a few hours, um, driving is not like driving a few hours a day. I don't think too many people are typically driving a few hours a day, right? So you want to be minimizing the stress on your body by leaving two days before. So it gives you that buffer day in between where it's like you're going to be having to do your tan and all that stuff, registration and so on and so forth, athletes meeting. Um, so basically like that's just going to give you time to, you know, kind of settle in, do what you need to do and not have to stress about getting there on time, like driving the day before the show. Um, you know, now some people do it and that's totally up to them. But like my recommendation is always to leave, you know, two or three days before just so you're not causing any extra stress on your body. Okay. Um, and also, yeah, when it comes to flying, one more thing is, I, don't, I recommend, if you are carving up, I would recommend not eating your meal while you're in flight because that is one thing that could cause water retention. So if you are eating meals in flight, I'd recommend just like 
low carb meals or no carb meals with just like protein and veggies kind of thing or just wait till you get there or wait till you're you know before or after the flight to eat and just focus on drinking lots of water during the flight you might have to get up a few times to go to the bathroom but it'll help keep you from you know holding water during the flight so that's another tip um when it comes to backstage uh my biggest uh, few big recommendations here is don't worry about what anybody else is doing for one you know you'll see some people doing some weird things backstage like drinking wine or drinking this drinking that you know eating crazy things like donuts and so on but it's like the best thing to do is stick to the foods you've been eating the past you know however many weeks you've been dieting you know and it's very similar things so it's like when you're doing your carb up if you're having uh, or for example, high carb day, if you're having like rice cakes and jam around your workout, that's probably, and that sits well with you and works well for you. That's probably the best thing to have backstage. There's no, it doesn't make sense to add in something random like a donut or, you know, chocolate bars and all this, all this stuff, because it's like, you don't know how that's going to digest. You know how that's going to sit in your stomach and all that's going to do is like, yeah, potentially could give you some energy when you go on stage, some vascularity, but to be honest, vascularity don't mean shit on stage. So just saying. Um, and regardless, like it's a lot better to play the safe bet and stick to what your body's used to and prevent any potential, potential variables there than to add in all this random, you know, it's like throwing a bunch of things into a cauldron and hoping it makes it something, some potion up for you that works really well or, or potentially could be the worst result ever. So better to play it on the safe side with your food leading into the show than to go crazy and think, oh, I need this, I need this junk, I need blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, like, there is a time and place where sometimes, like, those food sources, the junk food sources can be beneficial, but it's not the norm, you know? Like, for example, if someone's trying to make weight um, and they have to be, like, very moderate with their carb up and then they're still on the flat side leading, like, the night before the show, then, yeah, like, for them, having, like, a burger and fries or something like that could, like, give them that fullness and that pop um, leading into the show, right? But like, there's not always a need for the junk food aspect leading before a show. And I can tell you that from my own experience and from other clients and so on and so forth, like way better to play safe than to try to do something crazy at the end. Um, the other tip I have for backstage is you want to be having your feet up, right? So you want to have your feet up. You want to take the blood out of your legs, have the, you know, keep your legs drier as you're relaxing backstage. It's the best thing to do. You get back there before the show, you kind of set up, you know, you're there for like an hour or two before you even get on stage. So it's like, you just want to relax, chill, put your feet up. So if you have a suitcase or like a, a bag or something you can put your feet on, like that's the best thing to bring backstage. So you can put your feet up. They usually do have some chairs and stuff backstage, but like with the amount of competitors there's usually is, um, you're not going to really have a chance to use one of those chairs more than likely. So it's good to bring something like that backstage with you. Or even if you have a chair, you can bring a chair, I guess, like a fold up a chair or something. Um, because it's good to have that to like be able to relax. Um, and you could also bring like a pillow. Just don't bring your pillow from the hotel you're staying at or Airbnb, whatever. Just bring your own pillow and I'd throw on a pillowcase you don't care about just so you don't get tanner all over it. Um, but those are just helpful things to have backstage. So it's like, you can relax, you know, like almost like you're just chilling, waiting for your, your chance to go up there because all the work's done at that point. You've put, the, you've done everything you need to do, ate your meals, did your posing, you know, dieted and trained hard, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's just displaying it and just chilling out and staying Zen leading into the show. Best thing to do those last few days. And you know, and that's why I say about the travel thing, making sure you leave early enough because it just prevents stressing out your body more. The worst thing you can do right before a show is stress. And the best thing you can do is just chill out and do your thing and go up there and showcase it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what I wanted to get across and just kind of like throw a video out there talking about this for you guys. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm really excited. Like I said, for my clients this weekend, I'm excited to see everybody else down there, um, for Canadian nationals. And I'm just looking forward to, you know, just being there and, and enjoying the experience. And that's what everybody should be there. You know, enjoy the experience. You know, you worked your ass off, go showcase it. You know, I'm not going to say anything cheesy, like go get what's yours or anything like that, because everybody's there to try and win everybody's there because they qualified they deserve to be there now go display it <laughs> so if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're looking for any type of coaching or advice or help or tips leading into a show feel free to send me an email uh, i have my email there in the description and of course if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure you hit that red button and subscribe now